Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergargar.com and in this video we are going to look at three reasons to love the substitute function. So this is one of Excel's text functions and it is very versatile and useful. And we're going to see three quite advanced reasons why that is in this video. So in this first example, we want to see the substitute function help us count how many words are in a cell. So in column A, I've got a list of uh, kind of keywords that people use to find my blog and my website. Uh, <laughs> some of them are a little bit fictional, like I love VLOOKUP. But we would like to find out how many words are in each of those cells. Now technically what we're actually going to do here to answer this uh, scenario is find out how many spaces there are and add one on top because we know if we can identify the number of spaces the number of words will always be one more than that. So index and match is three words and there's two spaces. Computer Gaga is one word there's no spaces. It's always one more. So that's how we're going to achieve this. So we're going to use a few different text functions, but substitute is the one that really gets the job done for us. First of all, we're going to use len. Now this tells you how many characters there are in a cell. So if I was to run the len function on that computer gaga, it just tells me how many characters are in that, that cell or that word. But what we're going to do is if I can figure out how many characters there are in total, and I'm going to subtract from that how many characters there would be if I got rid of all the spaces. What's the difference between that? So if I was to put uh, len in again, but this time substitute in there. Now substitute just replaces existing text with new text. But there are so many reasons why that is useful. So in this example here, I'm going to substitute any spaces that are in cell A2 with no space. I'm going through this quite quickly here. This is not meant to be an in-depth tutorial on substitute. These are some quick fire reasons why we should love it as much as hopefully we do already. And I'm just building on your current love level. But here I'm replacing any spaces with nothing uh, in the substitute function. Taking out all the spaces, if there are any, counting how many cells. So if I press enter here, there's none. There's no spaces. How many characters in total? Take away the number of characters it would be if, the, if it took all the spaces out. There weren't any, so it makes no difference. If I copy this down... That tells me there's one space in there, three spaces here, two spaces here. Now really we're not trying to count the spaces, we're trying to count how many words there are, but we know there's always one word more than there may be spaces. So at the end of this formula, if we just put plus one, that will be how many words there are. So there's one word now in the computer gaga, but there's two for Excel formulas and four for Excel tips and tricks. Now in this example, this is working on the theory that there are no erroneous spaces, uh, leading and trailing spaces, which is a common situation when people type and paste data into a cell. Now if we wanted to protect ourselves against that possible situation, uh, we could use the trim function as well around the occurrences of A2. So if I was to trim that cell, that would remove any excess spaces between the words or on the end of the string. And then I can kind of repeat that. I might just copy that one and just paste it in instead of this A2 bit here. So I have a trimmed version of that A2. And when I press enter here and copy it down, it will make no difference. But because that trim is there, should there be excess spaces on the end of a cell, like A3 here, it makes no difference to the result. 
because that trim function is going to destroy those excess spaces keep the one in the middle that's a normal space and then the formula does its thing so that is example number one of the substitute function okay example number two here where we will use the substitute function to convert the decimal separator. So I'm using an example here of a question that has come up quite a bit on my training over the years, where when we're dealing with values from European systems, they may conflict with what we use here in the UK or in other countries as well. Whereas in most of Europe, they will use a different decimal separator to the UK whereas we would use a full stop they would use a comma so imagining that these values on screen have come from a database or system based in uh, parts of Europe and it's come into my Excel here and it looks lovely but it's absolutely useless to me because my local settings are not recognizing and understanding what they are good news substitute function is going to sort those out for us so we're going to use two substitute functions this time one is not enough this time and what the first one is going to do is get rid of those full stops the full stops are being used here as a thousand separator whereas typically in the UK we'd use a comma for that but we wouldn't need to type that in anyway we'll do that with formatting so I'm getting rid of those Let's select the first number, put in a comma, let's put in a full stop, and replace that with nothing. I am taking out those full stops. Now we're going to use another substitute function to convert the commas in those cells to a full stop, which is what I would use as the decimal separator here in the UK. So just outside the one I've got, if I start another substitute function, and I'm going to use the answer I've got there as the text value, put a comma after it. The old text will be a comma, and then the new text will be a full stop, close bracket. So that might look a little bit crazy with the commas there. This one being an argument separator, that's the one we're replacing, another argument separator there. And there's a full stop. Replace the comma with a full stop. Uh, that comma there sorry um sorted that is what we want the last thing really is to wrap the value function around that because substitute is a text function although it will change the separators like i want it will remain as a text value stored as text so the value function is there to convert it to something numeric so if i now press enter and copy this down no full stop there necessary despite the formula saying replace a comma with a full stop and there is a comma but it hasn't replaced it because it knows as a decimal separator and it doesn't need to but if I copy this down it does with value 3 and value 5 because now it is necessary to do so I can now format them in the appropriate currency whether that be US dollars or whether it be the uh, British sterling so if I was to choose my local currency that was horrible that wide that column doesn't it uh, but here we have it we have the correct value most importantly ignoring the currency settings so that I can add them and chart them and anything I may need to do but previously they were useless to me but now they also look the part as well which is good too got a thousand separator in now because I formatted it in the appropriate accounting format Okay, example number three, and the biggest formula yet, where we use the substitute function to return all the characters after the final instance of the delimiter character. So there are different techniques in Excel to, you know, split text by a delimiter character or return characters before it, etc. But now we're being quite specific with the final instance of one. So looking at these text examples, we have kind of two hyphens in the first one, and the characters after the last one will be D, F, Z, 
got one hyphen in the second one. The characters after it, there's four characters, M104. So they're quite irregular, the values in that column. All I know is that after the final instance of the hyphen, I want the stuff after it. So this is going to take a bit more work, but once again, the substitute function will be up for it. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find out how many hyphens are in each of those cells. And the good news here is that we have already done that in this video. We have, in the first example, found out how many words in the cell. And we did that by finding how many spaces plus one. Very, well, basically the same technique here. I'm going to do the len function to find how many characters in that cell and subtract a version of that cell without the hyphens. That will tell me how many hyphens there are. So substitute A2, um, oops, at comma, the hyphen, replace with nothing, close, substitute, close len. So if I press enter, it tells me there's two hyphens there, one hyphen here, two there, three there, one there, as we can see. Now, please don't be misled into thinking it has to be a hyphen. This can be any decimal, uh, yeah, sorry, any delimiter character. A real common example of this would actually be a slash. You know, so when we're dealing with file names and URLs and trying to return information after the final slash or the, the third slash or something like that to get a, a certain folder or, or file out of a directory or web address. It's a very typical example of this kind of thing. Okay, now moving on to the next part of this formula because we are certainly not done yet. So now we know how many hyphens there are, we want to put a flag down in the last one so that we have a unique way of identifying it. So in this formula, at the start of it, here comes another substitute function. And this substitute function, whoops, this substitute function, substitute, is going to be used to, in A2, replace any occurrences of a hyphen with some kind of other marker. So I'm going to use a asterisk here, but this could literally be any character, but I want something unique. So I'm picking an asterisk because there aren't any of those in these text values. But some kind of unique character, could have been anything, could have been a question mark, that would have worked too. And then after that, here is the magic question of this example. Instance number. None of the examples in this video so far have made the most of that, but that is a real special part of the substitute function that really differentiates it from some of the other text functions available, that you are prompted for an instance of that character. Like, what instance of the hyphen are you interested in? Is there a specific one? Well, yes, there is. The last one. I want to put a flag in the last one, the final occurrence. So, the good news is, that's the answer to it. The formula we had beforehand is how many hyphens there are, aka the position of the last one. So if I just click on the end and put a close bracket and press enter, the point we're at now is that we have put down a flag, put down a marker in the final occurrence of a hyphen in each of those cells. Now the final moment is to get the characters after that marker. So, last bit here, and this is coming from the right function, extracting text from the uh, like characters from the end of a cell. Right function wants to know where the text is. It's A2, comma, how many characters? Well, that's the difficult question. So, what I'm going to you here, Similar technique to what we've done once or twice in this video already. Len functions getting involved so that I can find out how many characters are there in total. And I'm just going to subtract from that the position 
of the flag, the position of the asterisk. So I can do that with the find function. I'm going to find the asterisk. One too many brackets there. Here we go. And ask me where? Where are you looking for an asterisk? In all that stuff <laughs> that I've already written. So on the end of that formula, I can put a close bracket for that find function and a close bracket for that write function. So the write function on the outside here extracts the characters on the end of A2, how many, whatever the difference is between how many there are in total and the position of the asterisk. That will leave what's left. So when I press enter and copy this down, this is doing what it needs to do. Doesn't matter how many hyphens there are in there, this is returning all the characters after the last episode of them. I've done a similar technique to this in a video I've done before on extracting postcodes out of UK addresses and extracting information out of URLs. It's a really clever technique and use of the substitute function, making the most of that instance number argument. And it's the biggest formula, so maybe the most impressive formula, depending on your point of view of this video of why we should love the substitute function. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of our other uh, video tutorials on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergaga.com.